Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at another very compact little ship for you to download and play around with. And this one is called the HU-43C Anglia Coria ship, which is this thing right here. Now it's a very novel design, isn't it? It reminds me so much of something, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Yeah, that design does look very, very familiar to me. So this is a little exploration ship. It's got atmospheric thrusters. It's got hydrogen thrusters. It's got everything you need to survive. And yeah, it's just a very compact, sleek design. So pressing F10 and finding the Anglia, Angler, Anglia, whatever you wanted to call it. So there it is, the Angler Coria. This ship weighs in at 1,295 large blocks. It uses no DLC blocks. It uses no mods, so it is perfect to build in survival mode. So let's start by going around the outside. We'll go around the interior. It's rather small in the interior. We'll give it a little fly around. So at the dead front here, we've got a lovely glass cockpit, which is quite a unique shape. It just comes curving down, and we can see our flight seat up there, and our co-pilot seat, which is sitting right down there. If I come down and below, we've got a hydrogen thruster and an atmospheric thruster. And just below that, we've got ourselves a merge block. We've got two merge blocks on this ship, one at the bottom and one on the side. So we've got plenty of ways to connect this up to a base or another ship. If I just pull back and start coming around the side here, just got some nice block work. This is a completely vanilla one, by the way. There is a separate version that does utilize the Economy Deluxe Pack and uses the silver and gold color skins. But I thought it'd be much more better to do a vanilla one. Yes, coming around the side here, we then come to this little bit right here, which is our way in. We have a camera on the top right, we have a door in the dead center, a merge block and a connector for you to connect up to, to a different ship. Or you could get another one of these ships, build it inverted basically, and connect it up so we have a double ship together. Yes, you could do fancy stuff like that. But then moving along, we then have a little sign. I think, isn't that the dog? That the Russians sent into space, their little test flight dog. I can't remember. Yeah, it might just be a logo. I might be thinking of something else. But there is a small logo up there on the LCD screen. Below that, we've got some blast door edges where if we were to peer inside, we can see some of the gubbins of the ship. There is a hydrogen engine. We've got a large atmospheric thruster. Below that, we've got some conveyors. We've got some spotlights, an ore detector, batteries. There is a projector, there's our gyroscopes and all that, all being hidden away inside this main body part. Pulling away and moving around to here, we've got a lot more stuff going on. So we've got two hydrogen thrusters at the top to help us with our left and our right. Below that, we've got a antenna. We can see a hydrogen engine sticking out right there. A large hydrogen thruster going to the back. An oxygen tank, some atmospheric thrusters to also help on the left and the right. Then coming down to here, we've just got a lot of hydrogen thrusters, a lot of atmospheric thrusters. The spotlight there, which you saw before, is allowing us to see in the dark when trying to drop on this landing gear right here. Moving up and coming to the very back of the ship, there is a large hydrogen thruster. And just above that, another large hydrogen thruster, just to make sure we got a nice a lot of acceleration to get ourselves out of the planet in a reasonable amount of time. On the opposite side, we do have a slightly different story. Instead of the doors going in and the merge block and connector, we have a Gatling gun. Yes, it just sits on the side there. Make sure you're all protected from one side. Perhaps it could be used as a asteroid, not an asteroid, a meteor defense system. I was going to say, if an asteroid is coming at you, that gun is not going to help. Then coming all the way to the top of the ship, we just got some lovely block work in the black and the white. We can see the large atmospheric thruster sitting inside there, which is a nice little feature. And then we got some more hydrogen thrusters along the back and a air vent on the top just to pull in any air into the oxygen tanks. And that about covers the outside. It's simply a lovely design. And I absolutely love how people can do like the plain front and then like a massive machinery part sticking out the back, which is just a confuddlement of different blocks. It just looks great. Then just one last thing to do, that is what it looks like from a distance, that's going all the way around. It does look good, doesn't it? So getting into my character, we have got two ways to get into this ship. We've got a doorway up there, which will just take us into the main body of the ship. 
but if we're landed on the ground, we can't exactly get up there without a jetpack. So if I was to crouch and come around to here, we have a button panel. So we've got a few buttons on here. So the first one is going to be to open the dock. Pressing that is going to open up the doors up there, which we don't want to do. This one is to close the door, which we just opened. So you probably heard that door closing there. And number four is to open up the hangar door above us. So this will allow us to hop into the ship without using our jetpack. I can simply just jump. Oop, I had it there for a second. There we go. And we can climb up into the ship. And there we go. We do have a jump drive up there, so we're capable of jumping a fairly good distance. And this is the interior. We've got another button panel right here, which has been built on top of a O2H2 generator, which is a nice way to hide it. Yes, we can just press that. Nope, wrong button. We want to press... There we go. I think I pressed the right button. We should start closing everything up. Oop, didn't mean to get onto this. Yeah, we should all be closed up now. But yeah, this is the interior. We've got a survival kit to respawn on. We've got a cargo container with some nice amount of resources in there. No, not too overkill. Just enough to repair yourself up if you took damage. The doorway there is to get in and out, which is where the merge block and connector are sitting. And then we just look around. There's the jump drive. Where we can see if I just hop up there. There we go. We can see our maximum jump distance is 2,000 kilometers. Looking down through this air vent, we then have another O2H2 generator, and there is a second one right there. So we can access it from this little air vent, which is a very neat thing to do. Saves a lot of space trying to get that connector in a reachable position. But then we have this door right here. I don't know why I looked up again. I've already talked about the jump drive twice. But yes, we can come through this door, which will lead us to the cockpit with a beautiful view. Look at that. Not too open, but then again, the glass blocks are probably more protective than the actual steel blocks themselves, because, yeah, space engineers. So we can look out there, brilliant view. Our co-pilot seat is sitting here next to a programmable block, which is telling us if there are any damaged blocks. We can then see on this screen, there's nothing on the bum panel, but we've got the hydrogen engines and the hydrogen engine number two, on and on. Then we can come up with this very steep block. This is my only complaint about this ship, is I don't really like this because this is hanging off the edge there. It just sort of annoys me a bit. But yeah, you can just walk up to here where the jump drive is sitting, hop into the seat, and now we've got a few controls. There's going to be a lot of repeating here because tab number one and two are basically set up the same, except one is for atmospheric thrusters and one is for hydrogen thrusters. So number one is to view straight down. Number two is the merge block. If I just come around to here and just... In fact, I'll find my free camera once again. Let's just bring this around. There we go. You should be able to see that if I switch the merge block down there. Then the connector underneath as well to be locked and unlocked. Number four is for the programmable block, which is for the flight system's AGL. I'm not too sure what that actually does. Perhaps someone could tell me. Number five is for the hydrogen thrusters. Number six is for the overcharging or the like power boosting of the atmospheric thrusters. I can't remember what it's called. It's so early in the morning when I'm recording this, because I'm trying to work around building work on my house. Yeah, you can just boost that all the way up, so you don't have to hold forward. It's a cruise control, that's the word. Number eight is a ore detector, and number nine is your hydrogen engine. On tab number two, we have the exact same setup, except the camera is pointing to the left, which is where our door is. We then have our merge block right there, the connector on the side. We then have the same buttons for the number four, so we can just turn that on and off. There we go. Then we have the hydrogen thrusters on and off once again. And then we have the boosting system for the hydrogen thrusters, much like the atmospheric, on the other tab. So that is good if you're going through space. Number eight has been replaced with the jump drive, and number nine is still the hydrogen engine. Tab number three, we've got the landing gear turning on and off. We then have the O2H2 generator on and off, the hydrogen tank, the battery, and once again, the hydrogen engine. And that about covers it. So taking off, so pressing P and lifting off, we've got quite a lot of speed. We are a small ship, and it is quite a nimble one. And then moving forwards, one hell of a lot of speed, because we've got two large hydrogen thrusters at the back there, pushing us along. Stopping speed is, well, a different story, because we are relying on that little thruster at the front there, and yeah, it's not a very good story, so we will have to do a 180, 
to stop ourselves in a good amount of time. And that stopped almost instantly doing that. That's always one thing to bear in mind. Going left and going right is quite slow compared to everything else, but not too bad. And then wiggling my mouse around, we've got a good amount of control. I almost lost control of that. Yes, it doesn't have any weight to it. It is a bit floaty, but we are a small ship. If I was to come over to here and find the gyroscopes, there they are. We can then just decrease the power a little bit, and that's a bit more reasonable. We've got some weight to it, but we're not too over the top. So the last thing I can think of doing is paying a visit to these pirates, which I've already crashed into two times in the last week. So we'll just go and fly over to here and crash ourselves straight into it. So it's a lovely ship design. I really do like this. Yeah, we've got some weapons on there. We've got a nice lot of stuff to survive in. My only complaint is, of course, the flight seat here, which is just hanging off the edge a little bit. So yes, as per usual, it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. There is a separate version using the Economy DLC pack if you own that. And now it's time just to ram ourselves into this little drone facility and see what we can do. So the Gatling guns have open fired on the side there, which is great. And there is the rockets. We're taking a lot of rockets. Oh God. Oh, there goes a the passenger seat. And out we go. I'm still in the flight seat, but now, now I've gone out. We actually did a lot of damage there, surprisingly. But anyway, this is the HU-43C Anglia Coria ship. Like I said, it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. And I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.